Hello, hand letterers, and thank you for joining me for the January Letter With Me session. So uh, I am going to start as usual by going to open the files for this Letter With Me session, and I'm gonna find that in my files app on the iPad. And I'm gonna start by um, importing the color swatches into Procreate. So to do that, I'm just going to tap on it and that automatically imported it into Procreate. And then I'm gonna go back. Uh, if you don't already have the brush set from previous Letter With Me sessions, you would tap on that to download that. I already have it, so I am not going to download that again. And then there's two versions as always. There is the PDF version if you would like to print it out. And there is also the Procreate version, which we are going to tap on. And that is going to open a canvas and procreate for us. So first I want to go to my color palettes and the one we just down here at the bottom, if you tap on palettes, if you go all the way to the bottom, that's where your palette's going to be right here. So I'm just gonna tap one of the colors there to uh, put that blue check mark there. So that is now our default palette. And under the brushes, uh, if you downloaded them, they will be at the very top of your list, but mine is a little bit further down. Um, lettering Practice AF Brush Set. And we're going to start with the basic mono AF. And if we look at our layers, we have one, two, three, four, five blank layers to practice our lettering on. You could always create more by tapping the plus sign. Um, and then these are the five different styles that we're going to be doing. So the first one is basic monoline, which is showing here. And we don't wanna letter directly on this because uh, you wanna be able to reuse it um, to continue practicing your lettering. So we're going to go to a new layer. And let me grab my screen protector here that I like to use when I'm lettering so it feels a little bit like paper and not glass, and grab my Apple Pencil, and um, I'm gonna zoom in, and make sure my pencil's the right size, and it is, so I have that set at a size eight. I'm gonna two finger tap to undo that, and let's start with January. So for January, um, I start here at the top, and I draw the, uh, this is called an ascending stem loop. And then I pick up my pencil and then I start, you could start at the top or um, I usually start at the bottom and draw that curve up and then we have our exit stroke. And um, like I've said before in previous videos, I try to end the stroke inside of the next um, part of the next letter that comes. So if I would have ended here, then I'm going to have that, you know, piece sticking out that I'll have to go back in and erase later. Um, or if you end it too soon, you have that little bit of gap there that you have to go back and try to line that up. So I always try to stop within that line there. So that's just um, a tip that I use. So the A is an oval shape and an underturn. So we're gonna draw our oval shape. And you can hold it in place if you like, if you're not great at drawing ovals, and it will snap into a quick shape. And then you can go um, up here and tap Edit and um, use these little blue nodes to edit your oval if you like. And when you're done, just tap somewhere off of it. And next is the underturn. Okay, so that's J A, and then the N is just a stem, and then a compound curve. And then underturn, underturn. Then another A, so we have our oval and our underturn. And then for the R, 
In this style, you just go, a straight, you know, just a straight line over and then an under turn. And then the Y is an under turn and a descending stem loop, which I added a little bit of style to. Um, the classic one kind of looks like this, but in this basic style, I just added a little bit of um, style stylizing to it. So that is how we would letter January. Uh, next one is Happy New Year. And because this this is coming out later uh, than I expected, um, January has been a ridiculous month for me when it comes to uh, getting stuff done. I keep having unexpected things happen that like pushes pushes back my schedule. So um, we're writing Happy New Year, and we're mid January now. Okay, so um, we have our capital H, our A, and then our P is a stem that goes, um, with two finger tap to undo that, it goes down to the descending line, and then our P, the um, round part of the P is like a reverse oval, and then loops through. So you can also have uh, the reverse oval, and then there's just an exit stroke like that if you like. But again, this is just a little bit of stylizing added to it. And then we have another Y. And our capital N looks a little bit like our lowercase n. And then our E is based on an oval shape. And then the W is an underturn an underturn and then a little tiny underturn for the exit stroke and then our y is sort of like our lowercase y but just on a larger scale another e another a and another r okay and then resolutions I'm not one for doing resolutions normally, just because I feel like, you know, they never stick. Uh, and then some people do words, like, uh, you know, what is your word for the year? And you just kind of focus on what that word is gonna be. Um, you know, do that. But for me, this year, I decided to do a phrase. And my phrase is creation over consumption. And that is because I have a terrible habit of consuming information. So instead of creating. So instead of just creating something, like I can't just start. I have to research. I have to overthink I have to analyze I have to get all my resources like I really spend so much time um, not creating you know I'm just consuming information I'm on social media I'm getting in inspired by different posts and different creators and I'm taking courses and I'm, I'm just consuming so much and it's great I'm learning a lot and I have so many great ideas, but I'm not implementing any of them because I'm just consuming so much and not creating. So this year, I really want to focus on creating more and consuming less. Okay. So that was my 2023 uh, phrase. And then we, um, while I was <laughs> babbling, we did winter. And then also when I think of January, I think of new beginnings because it's a, a new year, kind of a fresh slate to start over if you want. So those are the five words um, that kind of resonated with me for January theme.
Okay, now this G goes straight into the S and then down and curve through. Okay, so there are our five words for the month in the uh, basic monoline style. And um, like, let's say you would want to try that again. Um, you have these spaces down here you can practice in, or you can just turn off that layer and go to a new layer, try again. You can use a different brush, different colors, um, and just basically, uh, you know, practice while having fun with it. So now I'm on the next blank layer and I'm gonna uncheck the basic mono line to show us our next style, which is the flourish mono line. So I'm gonna go back and choose the mono flourish brush. And that is a good size, that is a size 10. Whoops, just make sure I'm still on the right layer. And with this style, it's still uh, using a mono line, so we're not using any pressure, uh, like in a brush lettering, but we are now lettering on an angle, which makes it a little bit different, and we're adding some flourishes. Now, um, these are just flourishes that I added. Um, you can definitely feel free to create your own flourishes. This is just a guide of some suggestions on where I would flourish them. And the actual uh, shape of the letters is very similar to the basic one that we did with some adjustments like this R. Instead of going straight over like the basic one, we're now um, starting above the midline and then coming down on an angle. So while this one is similar, it just does have some slight tweaks to it that just makes it a little bit different looking. So this H is all one stroke. And if anyone is wondering, when I create these uh, worksheets for you, um, I'm not using a font. Uh, this is my hand lettering. And that what is why it might look so easy for me to um, trace this sometimes is because it's already like what I'm used to doing because I wrote it. Um, but I don't create this immediately with this brush. So I will use a pencil brush and I go in and I sketch the uh, sort of skeleton of the word um, and the letters. And then I go in and add um, flourishes where I think there should be flourishes. And sometimes that you know the word might look a little bit unbalanced because there might be more flourishes on one side of the word than the other side. So, you know, I, I do just a basic sketch to see what looks right, and then I come back in and write on top of it with this brush to make the um the practice sheets for you. Okay, now this S, it starts a little bit above, just like the R, above the midline. It comes down and around and then curls up into a little dot there. And then I didn't keep the um, exit stroke here. You can add an exit stroke if you like. And then the O. Actually, let's try that again. I don't know why I drew that that way. So again, like I've I've um, covered this in previous videos, um, it might look like you start here. And while I do that when I am uh, doing the final inking, when I'm actually making the 
these sheets, I start with the base of the letter first, and then I'll go in and see where a flourish looks good at, if that makes sense. I cover this in other Letter With Me videos where I actually start with my pen when I'm starting the letter. Because I know that's a big struggle with a lot of um, people when you're learning to hand letter is you don't know where to start. Like, where do you put your pen down? Um, so a lot of times just seeing how I start lettering these where I lift my pen each time. So WI is one of those uh, combinations of letters that a lot of people struggle, struggle with. So like W, anything after a W really. So like WI, WH, WR is a big one. Um, and what uh, a lot of people have an issue with is um, ending the W. You always want to make sure you have an, an exit stroke. That And that exit stroke is the, the main um, part of what is separating the W from the I. So um, if you don't, and if you just go right into an I, that's going to look more like UI. So that is a, a big struggle. But this one, this exit stroke, has a loop added to it like that. Um, but again, you want to um, always have an exit stroke after your W so you can differentiate the letters. And then here I have um, a stroke here that I've included. You don't have to, you could just um, continue like that if that little extra stroke bothers you because it's not really, normally the end would um, lead into the T, but in this case, there's a flourish. So it just felt a little unfinished to me and that's why I added that one there. And then the T flourish comes around, curls up. And I forgot the end of the R. So I'm just gonna add that because like I said, it just looked a little unfinished to me for some reason. And then the N um, in New Beginnings, again, uh, this word when I was creating the flourishes, uh, most of the flourishes were towards, um, you know, from like here back. So it needed some flourishes here. And I was struggling, and I'll tell you why, is because anything that I added to this N ended up making it look like an H. So you really want to um, be mindful when you're creating your own flourishes that um, if you add these shapes um, and a lot of times you know if you're using this type of shape it might look like an E or a C so um, yeah just be mindful when you're adding your own flourishes that it's not making the letter look like a different letter or else we would have hue beginnings okay and then this exit stroke goes into a flourish So with beginnings, um, normally I start here when I'm making these. And then finish out that flourish. And just a reminder to keep all of your letters following the parallel of the guidelines that are there or angles and that's going to help keep everything looking um, consistent here was another one where um, there was whoops where there was a possibility of it looking like an H so like if this was here that looked too much like an H so I had to really move that flourish to the left. Um, so it wasn't confusing on the eyes. Okay. 
And those are my pet ratties in the background <laughs> making noise, getting a drink of water. has an exit flourish okay and that is our five flourished mono style letters and again we're gonna turn that off go to another blank layer turn off flourished mono line to show our brushy bounce style and we're gonna go to our brushes and pick brushy bounce you know, this is a pressure sensitive brush. So to get your thick strokes, uh, you're going to add pressure and then um, lighten up on your pressure as you're moving your pen away from you. Or if you're doing, if you're not moving the pen towards you, we're gonna keep it light pressure. So um, with this oval in the A, I'm gonna start here, draw up, so I'm drawing away from myself with light pressure, adding pressure coming down, and then light pressure going up, hard pressure down, light pressure up, hard pressure down, pick up your pen. And then this is the compound curve, so we're going to go up light, down hard, up light. And now you can really start to see um, the difference with the thicknesses in the lines. Now this style doesn't have a very large contrast in the uh, line thicknesses with pressure. And that's just by my choice. I, I like for there to be some contrast, um, but for this particular style, I didn't want a huge contrast. Now, if you do, if you want a very thin upstroke, you can go into the brush, uh, go into the settings, and if you go to Apple Pencil, uh, you can, right here under pressure and size, you can turn that up. And you can see as I'm turning it up, it's making that uh, line thinner. So if I hit done, and now if I, I'm gonna also change the, thickness of that. Um, let me turn that down a little bit. So down heavy and up light. Now you can see there's a very large uh, difference with the thin line and the thick line. But that is how you would then go in and change that. Uh, but I'm going to go and change it back. Oh my gosh, I don't even remember what I had it at. what it was okay so let me go to about this brush and I'm gonna hit reset and that's gonna reset it to how it was so it's okay if you mess up uh, in the settings if you want the original back just go and hit reset and now we're back to our original brush so the H was all in one stroke these P's are very similar uh, to our uh, basic mono line, except this time we're adding pressure. Same with the Y. The um, style or the shape of it is the same shape, just adding pressure to the lines now. And the N actually also. So you can see how you can get different um, styles just by tweaking little things such as the pressure settings in your brush or using the same style but adding a slant to it. And this style is also uh, bouncy which means it's going um, above and below the normal um, guidelines. So normally an R would stop here, but it's going down beneath the baseline. And normally an S would start here, 
you know, fit within those two squares, but we're bouncing above the X height and below the baseline. And that just gives a little bit of a movement to the word to give it that bouncy look. and winter. Again, we're bouncing below the baseline and only for some letters. I don't do all letters. Because you want some letters to stay on the baseline so there's some sort of um, you know, the eye can kind of see that there's some sort of guide to follow when reading that and that only certain letters um, go above or beyond. Now, some letters I don't bounce at all. Some letters I'll bounce either above the um, midline or below the midline and then some I'll, I'll do both. Just really depends on, again, readability and balance. So obviously I wouldn't bounce a G because that's already going below the baseline. And then I didn't bounce the, this I um, because I'm bouncing this end down so I'm going beneath the baseline and this end I'm not bouncing down, I'm bouncing up. So I'm bouncing over the midline. Again, the I is not bounced. And then this N uh, is below. If I went above and below, um, you could do that. But that just makes this N look like it doesn't fit with the rest of these letters. It looks too big. So that's why I chose just to bounce below. Again, the G already is going beneath, so we don't need to bounce anything there. And then the S, I'm going below. So that's kind of how I make um, my decisions on where to bounce those letters. If you want to give it a go on your own and not follow, um, not follow the the practice page, um, feel free to do that. And I do have a separate um, ebook on how how to do that and make those decisions, what looks right and what doesn't. Um, if you're interested, comment and I will leave the link for you. Um, okay, next we're gonna turn this one off. Turn Brushy Bounce Off, which is showing now Flourished Classic. Um, it's probably really hard to see, but we're gonna zoom in. Um, I'm gonna make sure I'm on a blank layer and choose the next Flourish Classic brush. This one is set again at a size eight. I'm going to zoom in, and this is a um, very uh, like a classic style of almost um, almost like copper plate, but not quite copper plate. So um, we are going to um, again be adding pressure down and light pressure up and continuing through with our flourishes. So like an example here is um, when I do the J, I start here at the top and I'm going to add, let me zoom in, I'm going to add some hard pressure down and then light pressure up. And normally I would add hard pressure down here, right? Because I'm moving towards myself. Um, but with this particular, you feel free to do that um, if that feels more comfortable for, um, for you and you prefer that look. But for me personally, when I'm flourishing, I keep all of my flourishes thin. So again, we're going to start here at the top, start thin, come down thick, and then go into our flourish there. Okay, then I um, come back up to the top, and I go thin, thick, 
thin and then end with a little ball on the end and then I go back and finish my flourish there okay so for the oval I'm going to start here and draw up down with pressure and then up with light pressure and then start here and start start with full pressure up with light pressure and then down with full pressure up with light down with full pressure and then as you're doing the flourish you're going to release pressure to finish that out and then start with hard pressure And then here, uh, you can start your flourish. And then when you get to about here is where you're gonna start to add some pressure to that. If it doesn't quite meet up, you could just go in and fill that in if you like. Again, you can hold your pen in place after you draw an oval um, if you want it to be that perfect oval shape. So the A is going to go into the R, which is a little hard pressure down, and that is where I pick up there. And then uh, I, I stop there. I don't continue going because this next stroke is going to be um, like a com like an almost double compound curve. So we're going to go down, up down up. okay and then here I start um, a little bit with light pressure and then go into hard pressure and then here I lift up for light pressure and continue that flourish with light pressure okay so there we have our January next is happy new year so this H is all done in one stroke so I'm going to start here light pressure up you can pick up your your pen if you want more control hard pressure down light pressure up loop around hard pressure down light pressure up okay now the P starts a little bit above the midline here And um, it also, um, this is where it kind of uh, mimics copper plate a little bit. So like this doesn't close up um, like our, our other piece have. Um, you can, if you like that style better, you can absolutely make your P that way. But this is using the underturn, I'm not underturn, the compound curve and just angling in a little bit uh, to and to kind of look like the copper plate P. And then this P again, whoops, start with hard pressure. And this is another, lots of uh, loops there. And um, here you can start with the flourish, but when I am um, making mine, I start with um, usually around here. I'll start light, then go into hard pressure, and then finish with light pressure. And then I'll go back and finish. Maybe I'll start down here and just follow. like that and that's how I draw it when I'm making these these pages now here um, because we're starting at the top and drawing toward us uh, you can continue 
uh, with that hard pressure down and then drawing back up, light pressure up. Um, but I kept it just, you know, just a creative choice. I kept it light pressure while I was drawing down. But that's up to you, whatever you think uh, looks better. And then the E. And the W. So the Y, we're going to start with light pressure. And then right here is where we're going to add pressure. And then come back up. And um, I start here. And instead of, you know, all the way at the top, again, that was just a, a choice I made, but feel free if you want to have your Y up there, you can make that change. Um, I'm going to start here, kind of curve into hard pressure. Let me try that again. Curve into hard pressure and then light pressure for the flourish. And there's our Happy New Year. Now we're going to do resolutions. Okay, so for the S, um, in this style, I start with hard pressure and then I go into a little bit of light pressure here. And then I'm going back into hard pressure as I go around the bowl of the S, light pressure back up, and then end with a little uh, dot at the end. So all in one stroke, this is what that looks like. And then the exit stroke. And in uh, calligraphy and hand lettering, you often hear coaches and teachers and, you know, the pros telling you to move your, um, your whole hand and not, I mean, like move your whole arm and not just your hand. So um, a good way to get used to doing that is to zoom in more. So you can see I'm like really zoomed in. And it makes it really hard to do these with just my hand, um, especially when it comes to flourishes like this. So I feel like the more zoomed in you are, the more you have to intentionally move your arm. So like, let's say for this, I'm gonna try to do this without moving my arm. really hard <laughs> I almost have to move my arm when I'm, I'm this zoomed in right because I almost couldn't finish that so um, see I have to move I have to move my whole arm across the screen um, and that might not be as required if you're zoomed out you have you know you um, have better um, movement within your hands. But if you're zoomed in, you almost have to. So that is just an extra little tip when, uh, if you want to kind of understand by experience what it means to move your, your arm or your shoulder when you're doing uh, lettering. I can't get my T straight. There we go. Okay, now this is going to be one big flourish here. Paint. 
And then finally, New Beginnings, we have an overturn. An overturn that goes into, oops, let's try that again. Goes into a flourish. Underturn. Underturn and our exit stroke. So with our B, I start here. Actually, my bad. Start with the entry stroke. And then we're going to do our ascending stem loop, which then goes into that exit stroke. And then I go back and finish out the flourish and then continue with the E. Again here, um, because the G would normally go into this stroke here, um, like that, but because we flourished it, um, you could just continue with the I. Um, I just added that extra stroke here because I thought it looked a little bit unconnected. Now we're going to do an overturn. I'm sorry, compound curve. I'm getting my terms mixed up here. And then another compound curve, which goes into an overturn. And then another compound curve. So you get a lot of practice with these ends, with your light pressure, heavy pressure, light pressure, heavy pressure, light pressure, heavy pressure, light pressure, heavy pressure, light pressure. So these are good words to practice if you're um, practicing transitioning from light to heavy and heavy to light. Again, I added this uh, stroke here and then our S we're doing pressure, light pressure, pressure, light pressure, and with a circle. And then we have our little exit stroke with a flourish there. So those are our flourished um, classic style, which we're going to turn those off. Turn that one off, which is now showing our quirky style. We're going to go to our last blank layer and choose our quirky AF brush. I have mine set to a size 10. My Magnet's kind of coming up there. Um, and again, zooming in. I'm going to start here with the J at the top. Come down and back up. This brush, we're going back to a brush that is not pressure sensitive, so you don't have to add pressure at all. You can draw lightly on your screen with this one. Okay, and as um, always, as I am going through how to draw these words and these styles. Um, I am also going to show you how to add some color gradients to your letters if you want to add a little bit of um, more style to them if you just don't want them in black or single color. And we've done some color tricks and tips before. But this is specifically, I'm going to show you gradients, how you can um, make one color go, you know, from its regular hue into a darker shade or 
you know, it's like a gradual blend. Or it might go from red to blue and where red and blue merge and blend together, it makes purple. So I'll go red, purple, blue. So I will show you how you can create those gradients and procreate as just an extra bonus tip for this month. And this style of um, where all of the letters are the same height, whether they're capital or lowercase. So like this is a lowercase u, but it's still as tall as the capital letters. Um, I really like to use this style when I'm making uh, lettering compositions that um, I don't want to um, have to worry about letters going above and beneath um, my writing area. So I really like uh, this style just because it has a, just a little bit of, um, I don't know, like a handwritten style to it and it's not so blocky, I guess. It still looks fun, I think. And here with the double letters with the NN, um, I, you can uh, do one lowercase and one capital uh, like this one, but um, because there was an N right after it, I just decided to keep both of these lowercase. And then the third one I made into a capital. Uh, same with the Gs, I have an uppercase here and a lowercase here just to give it a little bit of um, quirk, I guess. That's why I named it that. Um, and there we have five of those. So now, um, if we want to get into the gradients, what I'm gonna do is go to the layers and I'm going to turn off my practice layer so it's just leaving the white background color and um, whatever uh, practice layer I have turned on here. So depending on whichever one you want to use, whether it's this style, this style, uh, let's go with this style for our, our gradient practice. So one of the things I want to do is move these away from the edge a little bit. So while I'm on that layer, I'm going to tap the arrow and put my pencil somewhere outside of the box and drag that down to where I want it. So let's just say, I don't know, right there is good. It's in the middle and it's towards the, the top of the paper. Um, and now I'm actually gonna drag this to the top uh, so I can have it be my uppermost layer. Now there's a couple ways that you can um, put color down on this. So uh, the first way is we are going to use um, an alpha lock. So to do that, if you tap the layer and choose alpha lock, um, it's going to not allow you to draw on anything that is not written on this layer. So I can't go in and draw in the background 
because um, it's locked to just be able to draw on this here. So I'm going to go to my colors and let's clear that out. And I'm going to start with the, the dark blue. And let me go to a more painterly, not painterly, but a bigger brush. So let's go to the brushes and in the Procreate brushes that come with the app, I'm going to go to airbrushing and I'm going to choose hard brush. And my size is about a five. And you can go in and just uh, color over to change that color. Or let me two finger tap to undo. Because alpha lock is on, I could go in and tap it and choose fill color or fill layer. Sorry, if you tap it and choose fill layer, but that is going to fill all everything on that layer. So if I would tap there, um, it would fill all of those, but I am not wanting to do all of those in that blue. So I'm just going to use my brush and brush over that. So I'm going to fill, make sure all the black is uh, covered with blue in that word. Okay. Now, uh, let's say I want to go to the light blue and let's say I want it to look like it's going from light blue to dark blue. Um, and there's a couple ways you can do this, but the one, um, most often used is like the horizontal gradient. Uh, so I'm going to, uh, just color over like maybe the top half of the letters and just color all of that in. So you can see we have this very clear line here where, um, you know, you can see it's not blending whatsoever. So to make this look like it's blending and going from light to dark, we're going to use Gaussian Blur. So under the wand, tap on Gaussian Blur, and then uh, use your finger or your pencil. And you're going to start on the left side of the screen and slide it to the right side of the screen. And you're going to see your percentage go up here, and that's going to tell you what percent your blur is at. So you can see um, this is just a 10% that it's going from light to dark and there's like a nice blend in between. There's no harsh lines or anything. So a 10% blur on that looks pretty good. And when you're done, if you tap the screen with your finger, you can cancel or hit apply or, um, you know, preview what it looked like before. So let's go back into Gaussian Blur. Blur that to 10%. Um, you could just also tap on the wand to close it out if you like that, or you could tap here and hit apply. And that sets it also. Okay. Um, another way you can add colors to a layer is with a clipping mask. So with that, you're going to add a new layer directly above the layer you want to color. And you're not going to add the color here. You're going to add it up here. So let's say for um, Happy New Year, we want to blend um, two colors to get a third color. And let's say we want, instead of going horizontal this time, let's go diagonal. So let's go choose, um, let's choose pink and yellow. So I am going to color over everything with pink. Okay. And then I'm going to take yellow and just make some diagonal. I'm sorry if I said horizontal before. I can't remember. Uh, we're doing a diagonal one this time instead of horizontal. So the yellow combined with the pink will make a little bit of an orangish so and we can't see our word here so the way we're going to be able to see the word is we're going to tap this and make this into a clipping mask so tap and choose clipping mask so now you can see 
our colors are just on the letters and no longer showing on the background. But we still have this line here. So we want to get rid of that. So let's go to the wand, Gaussian Blur. And again, we're going to move our finger from or pen from left to right until it is to your liking. If you blur too much, you can see it's getting um, dark on the top because it's uh, the shape didn't go too far above. I mean, the color didn't go too far above um, the letters there. But that's at about 12%, and I like that because there's three different colors. There's the the yellow, and then like a, an orange, and then the pink. So that looks really pretty that way. And then um, another way we could do it is to uh, go from the color to like a white. So it looks like there's a, like a glare on it. And we're going to use the horizontal one for this. So uh, let's go back to, or actually let's add a new layer. And for resolutions, we're going to, let's go try red this time. And again, I'm going to color over. That. And I'm going to make that a clipping mask. And this time, uh, let's go to white. I'm just going to draw a white line through the center of the word. And again, I'm still just a size five. And hold it in place. So it's a straight line. And now when I go to Gaussian Blur, and blur that. Uh, again, about 10% is good. You can see now it looks like there's light hitting the word right in the middle of it. Um, so that kind of gives it a nice gradient. So it goes from like the full hue of red um, to like less red to full red. So that's another way. Um, a fourth way is we can um, use, uh, let's see, let's, what color do we want to use? Let's go with um, the light blue. We'll do the light blue and the dark blue again. Um, so we're going to go from light to dark again, but this time what we're going to do is actually let me let's go to this layer and let's color in our winter on the alpha locked layer and make sure all of that is colored in okay now we're going to add a layer above it and it's already, um, if you add a layer in between the layer and the clipping mask, it's automatically going to turn on that clipping mask for you. So we don't have to tap that. Now I'm going to go to the black, not sorry, the dark blue. And this time I'm going to actually add um, some darker color where I think I would want some shadows. So I'm going to turn my pen down maybe to about a 2%. And so uh, for this, I'm going to say the light is coming. Um, let's say the light's coming because it's already a little bit dark here. I wonder why that's doing that. I think it's. There, it was that light or was interfering with that one. Um, let's say the light is coming from the top. So the shadows are going to be underneath the letters. So again, let me make sure I'm in my blank layer here, and I'm just going to go and add some lines to the bottoms.
like that and that doesn't look too nice but <laughs> when we blur it it will um, get rid of those uneven lines oops wrong one uh magic wand gosh and blur and now we're gonna blur that probably about five percent i think looks good and then tap off of it so now we have a little bit of shading with a gradient so um, it's lightly going from light blue to medium blue to dark blue uh, using that method and turn those back on and then for our last one another way you can do this is um, by letter um, or even a radial so if you wanted to make a circle uh, and this is used a lot with mandalas you might um, create a radial of colors and then blur that out um, uh, but let's go here and add a new layer so this is automatically set to a clipping mask and we're going to switch colors so um, you could add a different color to each um, letter like you can make this whole letter blue but I'm going to make a different strokes of the letter different colors so I might have that stroke and then maybe skip a few and go into this stroke to make it blue and then maybe here just randomly go over those and let's go to um, a light blue And again, make sure all your black area is covered. Okay, and then let's switch colors again. Let's go to yellow. So when you put yellow next to a blue, you're gonna get green. So keep that in mind when you're, you're placing your uh, different colors. I will just fill in the rest of the blacks. Okay. 
Whoops, what am I doing? <laughs> Pay attention. Okay, that took a while, but um, we have that colored in. And that actually, honestly, I think that looks really um, cute and colorful, but let's add some blur to it. So wand, gosh, and blur. And now when we add a blur, these colors are gonna combine and create additional colors, kind of giving it like a little bit of a, a rainbow feel because um, combining these, now we're adding some greens and some purples. Again, if I go too far, the black starts to come in. Um, so I don't want to go too far on that. But I want to go far enough where I'm seeing the greens and the purples. So about 6% looks good. Um, and now you can kind of see now we have these extra secondary colors uh, that come in and give it like a really colorful kind of rainbow feel to it. So there are five ways, actually six ways if you wanted to do a radial. Actually, let me just show you what the radial would look like real quick. I'll turn off all of these and let's fill this with black. Okay, uh, now I'm going to tap the plus sign. Let's put this in the middle. Now in a new blank layer above it with, um, actually let me turn the clipping mask off real quick. Um, I'm going to do that same kind of adding colors but in a circular. So I might start with yellow and then, whoops, go to pink and add a circle of pink around that. And then maybe light blue. And then dark blue. Mm, how about you used red? Let's add red in there. We still have some showing, so let's do another yellow. And I'm just going to fill the rest in with yellow. So now, when we blur this, whoops, I don't want select, gosh, and blur. And we're going to blur this until the colors start to blend together really nicely and now if we make this into a clipping mask now we have um, and like I said this looks a lot better if it's a like a mandala or something that is already a circular shape um, you have your radial gradients on here now so there are six ways that you can um, go in and add some gradients to your lettering. So I hope you have lots of fun with these um, new words of how to letter them and how to add a little bit of um, gradient color to them. And enjoy the rest of your January. Thanks for watching. Happy hand lettering.